Howdy and welcome to the Mighty Mighty Chuck Channel. I'm Chuck. Fed approves October reversal of historic stimulus. They're going to start unwinding their $4.5 trillion balance sheet in October. They're going to do it real slow, real gradual. Uh, the Fed did not raise its benchmark interest rate. Uh, officials projected that there would be uh, one fewer rate hike than initially forecast by 2019. The Fed also reduced its outlook for inflation, cutting expectation from 1.7% this year to 1.5%. You know, that's a modest change. And from 2 point, and from 2% to 1.9% in 2018. Again, just a modest change. But here's something that um, you're probably not going to see in the articles regarding what the Fed's doing. The uh, articles and newscasts will continue talking about how you know the economy is, is turning around. It's, it's, it's growing. And the truth is, when I look around the county where I live, there is growth. Uh, actually, there's more growth than I, I'm comfortable with, to be perfectly honest, because I live in a rural country area. And as a business person, of course, you want you want the growth. And, you know, if you're in real estate, you want the growth. But as a person that, you know, moved away from a city area out into the country, I don't want to face congestion when I go into Madison. I don't want to face congestion. Um, I don't. And I also have the, these uh, beautiful lands, you know, being uh, bulldozed and houses going up. It doesn't totally thrill me, to be perfectly honest. So there's the other side of it. On the one hand, we want growth. On the other hand, we don't want it in our neighborhood. <laughs> That's the truth of the matter. We want, we want growth for the country, but we don't want it in our neighborhoods. Oh, man. But what I was going to say is what you're not likely to see in some of the reports on the Federal Reserve and the economy is uh, about the money supply, and that's something to really pay attention to is money supply figures. However, there are some people talking about it. Otherwise, I wouldn't so easily come up with the information. <laughs> I mean, yeah, not enough people are talking about it, but there are some people talking about it. And what I'm talking about is the money supply growth drops again, falls to a 108-month low. The last time that money supply growth was this sluggish was um, August 2008 uh, when it, it grew at a rate of 4.1%. And uh, this, this last August it grew at 4.2%. So uh, the money supply based on the Austrian money supply measurement is, um, is that bad. And a lot of people consider that measurement better than the, the measure of M2. Um, so you've already got sluggish money supply figures that points to a sluggish economy and also the velocity of dollars, the number of times the dollars that's in the economy turns, that's also, uh, unless it's recently turned around, it's also sluggish. I haven't checked, you know, like yesterday, but the, the last time I checked, it, it, it was also sluggish. And if I'm wrong on that, it's still being sluggish, I, you know, I apologize. The last time I checked, it was still sluggish. So you got the money supply not growing like it should be growing. You've got a sluggish velocity of money, which is the number of times that money turns in the economy. And uh, this points that we're moving toward a recession. And yet Janet Yellen and the Federal Reserve, they're going to uh, start pulling even more money out of circulation. That's what they're going to do when they start trying to unwind their balance sheet. Now, they're going to do it slowly, and I would hope that if they see whether it's where it's pulling the money supply down too quickly and the velocity of money isn't you know enough to, to keep growth going, that they'll back off. I would think they would back off, but um, it's problematic. That we may actually be on the verge of another recession and the Federal Reserve is talking about unwinding their balance sheet at a time where we may very well be moving into another recession. Um, and, and one thing to, to consider when you look at growth like in this county, how much of that is uh, with investment dollars and how much of that growth is with borrowed dollars. And if the money supply continues not growing like it should be growing to back up growth, then you're going to have what I term an inflationary gap, which that means you're going to have more cost in the economy than the economy can afford. You're going to have more debt in the economy than the economy can afford. 
and I'm talking about you know individual debt uh, and business debt. The government debt's already m- much greater than the economy can afford. We can't afford the level of debt that the that the U.S. government has accumulated. The only way, the only way, the only way that debt can be handled is if they start minting trillion dollar coins and deposit with the Federal Reserve. And, and basically balance, improve the balance sheet of the United States government by basically minting trillion dollar coins. And of course, when you make that change, where it, it becomes even more apparent that you have a soft currency rather than a hard currency, then the currency drops in value, and that's a problem. And when the currency drops in value, then inflation, you know, increases. And historically, people are afraid of inflation. Here's the thing about inflation, though, is inflation does two things in the economy. It erases savings. In other words, if you've got $500 saved up, wherever you've got it, it doesn't matter where you got it, you got $500 saved up, and you have a high inflation rate, well, that the longer that $500 is sitting there, the less its true value is. In other words, the longer it sits there with a high inflation rate, it just automatically, the, the value of that $500, $500 declines. And, and that's, that's the bad part of inflation as it erases the value of savings. But one person's savings is another person's debt very often in the economy. In other words... I'll, I'll loan you $500, well, I consider that $500 my savings, and you take that $500, well, that's your $500 debt. You owe me $500. And that debt stays on, on the, uh, in the system up until you either repay it or you default on it. That, that debt stays there on, on the balance sheets. And as inflation reduces the value of my savings that I expect to collect back from you, it reduces the value of my savings, it makes it more easy, that inflation makes it more easy for you to pay that $500 back because you, in, in a true inflationary environment where the inflation is fairly across the board, your income is increasing, and the more your income increases, then the less that $500 debt appears to be substantial, a substantial part of, of anything. In other words, it, it becomes inconsequential. Well, when you first borrow that $500 and that $500 means something to you, you know, it's consequential to you. But the more money you earn, and the easier it is for you to repay that $500, then, you know, it's nothing to you. So, Inflation actually in itself can erase debt and, and make it less likely that debt will be defaulted on in the economy. So inflation is not altogether bad, but of course if it gets out of control, it, it creates havoc. It does. But inflation actually, if you, don't have a, if you don't have enough inflation in the economy to kind of make that debt affordable, then you end up with a situation like we've got now where there's no way the federal government can ever pay the debt that it owes. It can't pay the debt that it owes. It can barely even manage the debt that it owes. It can barely even manage the payments of the debt that it owes. So inflation would actually would help the government be able to buy, buy down its own debt. So and it, besides being able to erase the debt with those million trillion dollar coins, the degree those million dollar coins or trillion dollar coins, <laughs> creates uh, inflation in the economy, it makes the other part of the debt more manageable. So it, it does two things. But now rich people, they ain't going to like that. Rich people, oh, no, no, no. We don't like inflation, baby. We don't like inflation. We don't want my savings to be going down in value. We want my uh, savings to go up in value. That's what we want. We do not want my savings to go down in value. Therefore, we do not want inflation. Therefore, we do not want the government to monetize its debt. We would rather the government default on its debt than to monetize its debt. Really? I mean, seriously? You want the government to default on debt? So it's a hell of a note. It's a hell of a problem. It really is.